أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله من أول الدنيا إلى فنائها ومن الآخرة إلى بقائها الحمد لله على كل نعمة وأستغفر الله من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه وهو أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم كن وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توقا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد It is the uh, eve of the first of Dhul Qadr and the session that we have it's uh, the tafsir of Ziyarat Ali Yaseen and these nights that we have until the day of Eid so it's 40 days starting from tonight they are known as the Chilliye Ziqade or the also known as the Chilliye Kalimiye or sometimes as Chilliye Musavi the 40 days of Dhul Qadr or the 40 days of Prophet Musa or the Prophet the 40 days of uh, Kalimullah that is uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wassalam and uh, in all of these books of ethics and akhlaq we don't find uh, any more authentic or strong sources or s- that talk about any chile, any 40 days, any observances as strong as these observances that we have that start from tonight until the day of Eid. Now the, uh, it's the only chile you can say that the Almighty, chile in, it's a Farsi word uh, which means 40 that the Almighty has emphasized and prescribed to Prophet Musa alayhi salam and when Allah emphasizes means that it is effective as well uh, in Quran says وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرِ فَتَمَّ مِيقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً that is Allah he invited Prophet Musa to for 30 days. 30 days, it's all these 30 days of the sacred month of Dhul Qadr. وَأَتْسْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرِ And Allah says, I topped up and I completed them with another 10. That is the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah until the day of Eid. فَتَمَّ مِيقَاتُ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً So it was 40 nights. وَقَالَ مُوسَى لِأَخِيهِ هَارُوا نَخْلُفْنِي فِي قَوْمِي وَأَصْلِحْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And also if you remember the first ten nights that we have in the month of the Hijjah, there are these prayers uh, we offer until the day of, na- day of Eid and that is the two rak'at where this ayah is repeated. So in such, uh, it is such an important uh, occasion that the uh, at the end of these 40 days Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says he swears he promises wal fajr wa layalan ashr says by those 10 nights the 10 nights of dhul hijjah starting from the first so it's a special time that we are in and it's it was such a joy for prophet musa alayhi salam that he rushed to the almighty in Quran, Allah says, وَمَا أَعْجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى That Musa, why the rush? Why are you uh, rushing? Why the haste for? وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّ لِتَرْضَى Prophet Musa in reply says that uh, I was in a rush. I wanted to uh, get to you so that you are happy. Now, in, because the to- topic is on uh, akhlaq and ethics and suluk, suluk means it's a process to get to the Almighty Allah, and it's a slow process. That is, it may take, take years and years. 
uh, for us to get to some of those qualities and attributes and maybe god forbid there are some negative traits in us that also would take some time to get them off our system but in a in, in this suluk also there is another process which is known as jazba jazba it's a fast track flash that allah tabarak wa ta'ala gives to some and in that fast track flash uh, they can get to their destination in a blink of an eye now that what happens over here to prophet musa is the second one jazba that prophet musa was summoned here was invited to allah tabarak wa ta'ala he brings his wife he brings his wife and his child to mount tur and then he comes to get some firewood because she was feeling cold and then allah gives him the tawrat and he is um, ascended or he is given the rank of uh, risalat to prophet musa or like prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he also got to the almighty in a flash that is by jazba now these uh, jazba also it may come in our lives as well and we have to be smart enough uh, to avail those opportunities and many of these great personalities who got to whatever rank they got to was as a result of knowing and benefiting from those uh, special opportunities that Allah gave them now what we have been told by our ulama among them it's marhum allama tabatabai the author of tafsir al-mizan he gives this special instruction to one of the other uh, noble of his time in those special instructions he says that in this month of zil uh, qada uh, and also zil hajja or in this chilli kalimiya the 40 days of prophet musa uh, perform ghusl tauba Ghusl Tawbah is just like the regular ghusl that we offer, but the niyat will be for the wrong that we have done, for repentance, Tawbah. One of our ulama, ulama, he used to say that when you are performing these ghusl, uh, have an extra niyat on it. And that is, say that ghusl in nishat. Nishat means that when you want to offer these observances, du'as, prayers, recitation of quran that allah gives you a special and a better mood and in that better mood you can observe these observances in a better manner so it's just a niyat and intention that we top up to that amal that action that we do now one of the beautiful amal that we have for this sacred month of zil qada it's every sunday there is a two rakat prayer that rasulullah has given as a gift to his nation which is known as the namaz at tawbah that you offer that on sunday and the some of the azkar because it's a special moment that we are in and for these 40 days so mentioning all this so that from tonight we can have this program designed so that we have everything in place and offer as much as we can and in particular uh, be persistent in doing all of it among the azkar that we have been um, told to recite it's ya raqib ya raqib it's the name of the almighty allah who is on the watch out istighfar a thousand times ya raqib a thousand times ya hayyu ya qayyum a thousand times now one of the ways you can have this ya hayyu ya qayyum uh, a thousand times in your program is by offering a two rakat prayer and that is the the namaz tawassul or namaz hajat that we have uh, with abul fazl al abbas alayhi salam how you do it is that after surah al hamd you repeat ya hayyu ya qayyum 400 times so there is no second surah after ruku and the two sajdas in the second rakat also you repeat this ya hayyu ya qayyum 400 times after surah al hamd so you've done the prayers and after ruku and sajda you end it so you've done 800 times ya hayyu ya qayyum and at the same time also you've observed this observance for the sacred month of zil qada and zil hajja now the other thing that is more important is that in these 40 days we have to look into the flaws that we have 
if there is something that needs to be fixed and corrected in our, uh, in our behavior, in our attitude, that needs to be corrected. Now, so it's a special month, month of Dhul Qadha, and it's the month where the Almighty Allah, He answers the du'as, and especially when it comes to oppressors. So it's the beginning of this uh, Arba'een of Kalimiyyah, and an opportunity for those left behind in the month of Ramadan, for them to make up for all what they have lost in the sacred month of Ramadan. Now, Allah wa ta'ala in Quran, He says that in Aiddata Shuhur in Allah is na ashara shahran. The months that Allah has, uh, they are 12, 12. Fi kitab Allah in the book of Allah. And this is since the inception and the creation of the skies and the earth. This is how Allah has made its 12 months. And in these 12 months, uh, four of them they are hurum. Hurum means holy, sacred, forbidden. So forbidden, the um, uh, um, forbidden meaning there is a lot of sanctity to these months. Now, in the uh, from the twelve months, four of them that are hurum or the sacred months. One is Rajab, then this Dhul Qa'da, and then Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. Four months special. Now, in these four months, uh, even if there's a roadkill in an accident, if we, God forbid, hit someone or someone is injured, so the blood money also, it escalates in these four months. So, it's if uh, whatever the insurance company charges you uh, for the accident that has been, if, uh, take, that has taken place, there is going to be a 30% increase on it. In Muslim countries, in Iran, for example, in these four months, if there is an, a murder or an accident, so whatever that blood money is, it escalates by 30% because it is a sacred month and everything is different in these months. People who have enemies or who want to pray for the downfall of an enemy or if they have hajat that they want to, them to be granted, they wait for these months to come and in these months they come and they ask Allah and their du'as also they are granted. Killing, war is forbidden in these months unless a person, unless you are attacked. So defense, it is wajib and defending is allowed. So it's a special uh, moment that we have, it's special months, special days. And also when we look into the teachings that we have, uh, one of that what is uh, to which a lot of uh, importance has been given is these 40 days if someone observes them properly man akhlasa lillahi arba'ina yawman if someone was sincere in observing 40 days for the almighty allah allah makes it as such that hikmatan wisdom you will see it in, uh, it gushes out from his heart. Man akhlasa lillahi arba'ina yawman fajjar allahu yanabi al-hikma min qalbihi ala lisanih. From his heart, you will see that over his tongue, all this wisdom and hikmat will be given to him for 40 days. So 40 days means that uh, maybe I want to be good in my night prayers. I start uh, a few days, I do it, but then it breaks. So it's just maybe seven days. But if I continue and make it for 40 days, then that becomes part of my program and I will, I will not lose it uh, and after that. Or for example, if I want to be particular and punctual with my, with my prayers on time, the same thing applies. So if I was cautious and observing these prayers for 40 days and on time, then from the 41st day onwards, it's going to be part of my uh, daily program. So that is how everything works. So, uh, adapting uh, with mustahabbat or making sure that something negative is in me that needs to come out of me. Uh, for 40 days we have to work and after 40 days that will be part of my existence. Uh, now, Now here in this hadith, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi says that you be with the people, be among the people with your tongue and your body. That is, you support them, you help them, you teach them, and you, whatever you can, uh, you be with them in all the good and, and in all the good deeds. 
So, in these days, uh, this is one of the, the special uh, observance that we have to have uh, in our life. So, it's the month of uh, Rasulullah in a way that he has given this namaz as a gift which is to be offered on Sundays known as the Salat al-Tawbah, forgiveness of sins and acceptance of Tawbah, liabilities, they will be paid. Uh, the uh, the death that we will be given will be on Iman, dying as a mu'min. Faith will remain and will be intact and enlightened grave will be given to us. Allah will be happy with the uh, with us. Our parents will be radi and content with us. And Allah will give a lot of rizq and provisions to our offsprings. All these barakat are there. Uh, in the prayers that we have for the sacred month of Dhul Qa'dah and the first 10 days of Dhul Hajjah. So, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa Atubu Ilayhi is among the recitals that you all recite. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim. Another recital. Now, one of the extra uh, bonuses we can get uh, is that from tonight, uh, uh, say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen 360 times every day. A hundred times salawat ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad, but on Thursdays and Fridays you have to increase it to 1000. Try and offer, and if you can do it, uh, for all these 40 nights, namaz ja'far tayyar. And once you get a hang and hold of it, then inshallah that also will be part of your program now. Throughout these Durus and the lessons that we have on uh, ethics and irfan, this is something that is given as a prescription, as a homework to all of those students uh, in this um, phase of suluk that they have to have this namaz jafar tayyar on board. It is one of those miraculous prayers which has beautiful effects. And then one of the other um, things that help a lot, it is the ta'qibat. Ta'qibat that we have after all the prayers, the little du'as, uh, and the best of it, it is the tasbih of Hazrat Fatima, salamullah alayha. And the way how you do it that has been uh, mentioned in the riwayat from Ma'asumin is that uh, when you finish your prayers, immediately you start reciting this tasbih. Now what you see in all the centers and mosques which is observed that after the prayers they recite inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi and then these istighfars are done and all that all that is against the uh, the divine teachings of Ma'asumin. That what Ma'asum has said is that once you've finished your prayers without moving from your place and without uttering a word, you quickly start saying the tasbihat of Hazrat Fatima salamullahi alayha as if it is connected and joined to the namaz. And once you've done it, may about two, it will take about two minutes. After those two minutes, you can recite whatever you want. And this will just increase the ajr, the sawab of the prayers by, in, by thousand folds. That is what Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam says. التأقيب أبلغ في طلب الرزق من ضرب من الضرب في البلاد. He says that this taqibat that you uh, offer after your prayers in getting to your rizq and sustenance, it's such fast and so uh, quick. It is much better, uh, much faster and quicker than you running around in all these different towns and places to uh, to get to your rizq. Says these taqibat, they will get those um, all of that to you much faster and quicker. So this was a little bit about the importance of these 40 days of Zil Qa'dah and the first 10 days of Zil Hajjah. And also it's the birth of Hazrat Ma'asuma Salamullahi Alayha buried in Qum. And she is the sister of Imam Ridha Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. And in the ziyarat that we recite, we say, Ya Fatima, Ishfa'ili fil Jannah, fa'inna laki inda Allahi sha'nan min ash-sha'n. The ziyarat of this Ma'asuma of Qum uh, is the ziyarat from Ma'asum Imam. He has such recited that Allah has given you a rank and honor and then we want you to be a mediator and a shafi for us in the heaven because of the rank that Allah has given to you. And then when we recite this ziyarat, we say that uh, the daughter of a Ma'asum and then the sister of a Ma'asum 
and the aunt of a ma'asum and such a lofty great rank Allah has given to her and then we end towards the end of it we say Allahumma inni as'aluka an takhtima li bis sa'ada that Allah you gave us all a good end fala taslub minni ma ana fih that what has been given to me this mahabbat this bond this association with the ma'asumin salamullah alayh that is with you hazrat ma'asuma never ever be seized away be taken away from us may that be here or in the hereafter this was a little bit about uh, hazrat ma'asuma her birth and the importance of the sacred month of dhul qada the topic that we have for this uh, semester it's the ziyarat al yasin and it's a beautiful ziyara ziyara to address imam al asr alayhi salatu was salam and there are many ways how you can address imam al asr alayhi salam one of them it's through this ziyarat al yasin now ziyarat al yasin you when you see it has been reported by the imam himself the Im- now there are many ziyarats where the imams they have uh, taught us how you addre- how, the way how you have to address them now this is an adab that we see that has been taught to us by allah tbarak wa taala in quran in quran in surah al hujurat and on many other occasions in many other ayat when people they used to come and yell and call the prophet and then by his name uh, and in a very disturbing or disrespectful way ayat were revealed that don't yell don't call out loud don't call the prophet don't address him by his name and allah himself he addresses the prophet as ya rasul allah ya nabi allah so these are the statements of the almighty allah when he wants to address the prophet it is by the designation that allah has he addresses him Now in Quran only on one occasion the name of the prophet has been mentioned and that to Muhammadun Rasulullah walladhina ma'ahu ashidda'u 'alal kuffar and that is in surah al-Fath that it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the prophet Rasulullah and those with him they are the ones who are strong against the oppressors and then very friendly within themselves So that is how Allah addresses. Now here we see that the prophets, uh, uh, the imma, they have taught us. Now all of these du'as that we have, for example, du'a ahd, ziyaratul ahd. These are du'as that have been uh, mentioned by the ma'asumin that they have asked us how you address them. Or ziyarat jami'atil kabira that we were doing last time. That is from Imam Hadi alayhi salam. Imam says when you want to address an imam, you address the imams as such. So here is ziyarat al yasin also it is from imam mahdi alayhi salatu was salam now the opening of this ziyara when you see it says la bismillah ar rahman ar rahim la li amrihi taqilun wa la min awliyaihi taqbalun hikmatun balaghatun fama tughmin tughni an nuzur an qaumin la yu'minun and then you say assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah as-salihin so the opening of the ziyarat it is with this ayah the ayah if you see it's a kind of a complaint or a kind of a an objection uh, so how why does it start like that they do not ponder into his commands nor do they accept the effective wisdom from his custodians So if it is from the imam then why is it starting with that uh, with that aya which is a, a kind of a complaint or a kind of uh, telling someone off Now here the reporters of this uh, the sanad or the matn of this ziyarat uh, ali yasin well it is definitely from imam alayhi salatu was salam Now one of the reporters that we have Uh, via whom these uh, ziyarat have been reported it's the uh, the envoy or the ambassador of imam alayhi salatu was salam where uh, what he has done is that uh, mashhadi uh, mashhadi when he is reporting the ziyarat now all uh, when he, he was reporting the question and answers from the imam he used to delete the question of the person asking the imam which some of the 
other nobles, they have objected on that, that had he not deleted the questions, then we would have known why the Imam has responded as such. So it is uh, definitely from the Imam alayhi salam, but in the question to, uh, for which the Imam was objecting on, that has been deleted. So, la li amrihi ta'aqilun. So those people, they don't ponder into his commands, the commands of the Almighty. Wala min awliya'ihi taqbalun. Nor do they accept it from the awliya of the Almighty. What do they not accept? Hikmatun baligatun fama tughnin nuzur an qawmin la yu'minun. This is something which is far from those people who, uh, who are faithless. Then he says, Assalamu alayna, that is, Salam be upon us, the, that is, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam and the Ahlul Bayt, wa ala ibadillah is salihin, and upon the noble servants of Allah. Ida raddum at tawajjuh bina, Imam then says that if you intend to seek us, aradtum at tawajjuh bina, that if you intend to seek us, and uh, to Allah wa ta'ala, if you want to intend to get us, get to Allah wa ta'ala, or intend us, wa ilayna fattaqulu kama qala Allah. So you say just like what Allah wa ta'ala has said. So the opening of the ziyarat is from here. Salamun ala ali yaseen. Assalamu alayka ya da'i Allah wa rabbani ya ayatih. Salam be upon you, the progeny of Yasin. Salam, assalamu alayka ya da'i Allah wa rabbani ya ayatih. Salam be upon you, O oh, the caller to Allah and the aware of his signs. Assalamu alayka ya bab Allah wa dayyana deenih. Salam be upon you, O oh, the door to Allah and the guardian of his religion. Now every one of these phrases requires a lot of uh, uh, information. Inshallah we'll uh, shed some of that uh, in the future sessions inshallah. Now what we see over here in this uh, few st sentences that we just recited is that the first one it said salamun ala ali yasin now ali yasin is something that we see in quran as well in quran uh, we've got all these ayat which say that salamun ala nuhin fil alamin salamun ala ibrahim and so on and so forth now for imam alayhi salatu was salam we've got this sentence uh, salamun ala uh, in Quran we've got this salamun ala il yasin now over here there are two recitations uh, two qiraat of this ayah salamun ala il yasin and some have the the qurra of Medina they have recited it as salamun ala al yasin so it's the ayah now they say the, the, those who are not from Medina they say salamun ala il yasin uh, it is like uh, wa inna il yasa lamin al mursaleen iz qala li qawmihi ala tattaqun and then salamun ala il yasin inna, inna kathalik najzil muhsineen so they say that il yasin over here it's like il yas il yas il yasin uh, like Ilyas and Ishaq, uh, so over here they say that it is Ilyasin. Now the Qurra on the reciters of Medina, they say that this is not Ilyasin, it is Aliyasin. So it is uh, with an Alif Mamdud, that is Alif Maddi over here, Aliyasin. So when it is Aliyasin, they say it is because of Surat Yasin that we have that is uh, in Surah Yasin, Yasin wal Quran al Hakim in Kalamin al Mursaleen. So it starts with Yasin and then wal Quran al Hakim and by the Quran, the, the which is Hakim and then in Kalamin al Mursaleen. In in Arabic, it is with emphasis, which means that indeed you are. And then again, when you say Lamin al Mursaleen, that is indeed you are, uh, 
definitely from among the messengers. So here, Yasin, it is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So when it says salamun ala il Yasin, so here yeah, the Qurra of Medina, they recited that salamun ala al Yasin. So over here also when we say that salamun ala al Yasin in Ziyarat al Yasin, it is the descendants of Rasulullah. That is salamun ala al Yasin. Salam be upon you, the progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This was one. So, uh, salamun ala adi yasin. The other thing that we, uh, uh, that was, we want to mention over here is that, uh, why has Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala um, sent the imams or the prophets? Uh, now, if Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala uh, had sent uh, the prophets uh, or the imams not in the forms of humans or some alien uh, creatures or creatures which were not, did not resemble the human being, then acceptance of that message of God would be impossible. They would say that they, they, people would be scared and frightened of such beings. So Allah has sent them in the form of human being and then in Quran also says that they are like you. They eat food like you. And you see them, they walk in the streets like you. Now the difference between the messengers, the special envoys of Allah Taala, and you is that they are humans like you. But because of that designation that Allah has given to them, Allah has given them some abilities and that is one of them, it is the miracle. And with those miracles, they can perform those miraculous tasks. Like for example, a prophet, although he is living with you and he is in the form just like you, he can perform miracles. Like for example, from the mount, um, from the mountain, a prophet, Allah makes a camel emerge. Not from a camel that is born from another camel. Allah, when he wants a prophet to perform a miracle, so this miracle is done by the Almighty via the prophet. So um, a camel emerges from the mountain and that camel also gives, provides milk. Or sometimes Allah gives a miracle to a prophet that is with a stick, with a shaft, he can uh, make rivers flow from a rock or he can with the same shaft or with the same stick, uh, he can make the river close and change into a dry dock, a dry land. So he can make, he can give shifa and cure to people who are blind and deaf or even life to those who are dead that is via miracles if you get time uh, we recite this dua nudwa on fridays now now why does allah do all this now he now many a times you see that even the miracles have been given to prophets now imams they performed all those miraculous tasks but then despite uh, we see that they suffered a lot they went through a lot of uh, uh, tests and trials and all these difficult situations. So why was that here? It says Allah, He wants everyone who has ruined himself or who will be uh, into the traps of devastation. He gets into those traps by bayyina. Bayyina with an evidence. He saw everything. He did not accept so, so that halakat that came to that devastation that came to that person after seeing all the evidences and proofs. Or yahya man hayya an bayyinatin. The ayah says that sometimes a person he is he lives and he uh, that hayat also <coughs> that is given to him that is also based upon these evidences. Now, prophets and imams also, they suffer. Although Allah has given them miracles, despite the miracles, they went through such a tough time. Prophet Musa, Prophet Isa, Amirul Mu'mineen, Rasulullah, all these are great personalities with high designations, all those miracles they had, but still they suffered. So why is that? One of the reasons for that is that Allah wants them, the prophets also, to elevate in their ranks 
and at the same time to the people wants to say that the same suffering that you are going through these imams and these prophets they too are going through the same sufferings now for example in this dua nudba uh, in the opening of the dua nudba that says that allah when he uh, uh, all the dua nudba it is mustahab to recite on fridays and on the day of eid and it, it is again a, a complete lesson of imamat so in the opening of that it says that فَقَبِلْتَهُمْ وَقَرَّبْتَهُمْ So Allah, you accepted them and you drew them closer to you. وَقَدَّمْتَ لَهُمُ الذِّكْرَ الْعَلِي And you provided them the, uh, you, uh, the lofty and the high zikr. وَالسَّنَاءَ الْجَلِي And then you approved them. وَأَحْبَتْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَلَائِكَتَكَ And then all your angels also, they descended and they came down to your prophets, to your imams. وَكَرَّمْتَهُمْ بِوَحْيِكَ And Allah, you honored them via your revelations. وَرَفَتَّهُمْ بِعِلْمِكَ And God, you supported them with your ilm. So all, now the three things that we say that an imam and a prophet has to have, one of them, it is the divine appointment. The second one is the ilm, the knowledge. And the third one, it is these miracles that are given to them. وَرَفَتَّهُمْ بِعِلْمِكَ وَجَعَلْتَهُمُ الزَّرِيعَةَ إِلَيْكَ وَالْوَسِيلَةَ إِلَىٰ رِضْوَانِكَ So all of these tests and trials and uh, positions and ranks that Allah gave to them was to bring them to the contentment and the rida of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Now then he says uh, in this du'a nudba, فَبَعْضٌ أَسْكَنْتَهُ جَنَّتَكَ Some of them, God, you made them settle down in your heaven. إِلَىٰ أَنْ أَخْرَجْتَهُ مِنْهَا Until you ousted them from that heaven. وَبَعْضٌ حَمَلْتَهُ فِي فُلْكِكَ And some of them, God, you made them embark on that ship. وَنَجَّيْتَهُ وَمَنْ آمَنَ مَعَهُ And you saved them and those who were with them. من الحلكة برحمتك. You save them from uh, from devastation by your mercy. وبعض اتخذته لنفسك خليلا. God, you chose some of them as your friends. وسألك لسان الصدق في الآخرين فأجبته. وجعلت ذلك عليا. وبعض كلمته من شجرة تكليما. God, you chose some as your uh, as your spokesman or like Prophet Musa who was chosen as the Kalimullah who spoke to the Almighty Allah Now all these are those designations that Allah gave to all of these Prophets and then miracles that were given to them uh, to all of these different Prophets at all, at all different levels but then despite all those miracles they went through a tough time they had to go through a difficult phase in their life and that is uh, they, had, um, they had to go through a difficult time so here uh, uh, one of the other things that we get to learn in this ziyarat Ali Yaseen is from the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam he says that إِذَا أَرَدْتُمْ التَّوَجُّهْ بِنَا Now this, this again is in the opening before the Salamun ala Ali Yaseen, the sentence that comes. Imam says, إِذَا أَرَدْتُمْ التَّوَجُّهْ بِنَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَإِلَيْنَا If you intend uh, to get to us, if you intend to get to the Almighty Allah, فَتَقُولُوا Then you would say. Now what we understand from the sentence, it's tawassul. Tawassul means getting to the Almighty via the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we've got loads and very many uh, ways how you can get to the Almighty. All these dua tawassul or the prayers that we have. One of the prayers that we have from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. Imam says, if you have a wish, a hajat, then you perform a good wuzu and then you offer a turakat prayer. Uh, can you mute please? Uh, you offer a turakat prayer. And then after the two rakat prayer, you say, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi'annaka malikun wa annaka ala kulli shay'in qadir. God, I ask you, that is, you are the king, you are the Lord. Wa annaka ala kulli shay'in qadir. And that you have power over everything. Wa bi'annaka ma tasha'u min amrin yakun. Whatever you intend will happen. 
And then we say, Allahumma inni atawajjahu ilayka bin nabiyyika Muhammadin nabiyyir rahma. That God, we've come to you, we've sought you via your Prophet, who is your beloved, the, the Prophet of mercy, Muhammad. And then we say, Ya Rasulullah, inni atawajjahu bika ilallah. This is one of the ways that you can have a tawassul with a two rakat prayer and a one line. Now, one of the other ways is that, uh, th these ziyarat that we have for every Saturday, every day of the week. Saturday is the day of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And in that ziyarat we say that Allahumma innaka qulta, God you have said. Now this is an ayah of Quran. Ayah of Quran says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ People who did bad, who did wrong, they come to you, the Prophet. Allah is saying to the Prophet, if those people, the sinners, the wrongdoers, if they come to you and they ask Allah to forgive or they seek you to forgive, then وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ If a Rasulullah forgives them, لَوْ وَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمًا You will find that Allah is opt for giving merciful. So seeking Rasulullah to be forgiven by Allah wa ta'ala, it is a prescription, it is a divine command of the Almighty Allah in Quran. He says that you go and you seek the Prophet, the Prophet will pray for you and then Allah also will forgive you as a result of the dua of the Prophet. So seeking this tawassul is what we find uh, in Quran. Uh, in Quran, of, and then uh, in the continuation of that same ziyara, we say, "Ilahi, faqad ataytu nabiyyika." God, we have come to your Prophet, mustaghfiran, asking, uh, yani repentantly, we have come to him, min zunubi for all the wrong that we have done. For salli ala Muhammad wa alih, you send salutations and salawat upon Muhammad and his progeny. Waghfir hali ya Sayyidana. That is, God forgive us. أَتَوَجَّهُ بِكَ وَبِأَهْلِ بَيْتِكَ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى رَبِّكَ وَرَبِّي لِيَغْفِرَ لِي So in the opening of the ziyarat Ali Yaseen, what Imam says that إِذَا أَرَدْتُمْ أَتَّوَجُّهْ بِنَا If you intend to come to us, or if you intend to get to the Almighty Allah via us, فَتَقُولُوا كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ You will say just like how Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has said. And what is that? Salamun ala Ali Yaseen. That is Salam be upon Ali Yaseen. As Salamu alayka ya dahi Allah wa Rabbaniya ayate. As Salamu alayka ya Bab Allah wa Dayana Dina. Inshallah, we'll continue next week. Wa Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Aizati Amma Yasifun. Wa Salamun ala al Mursaleen. Wa Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم